Helen Blakeman is a young, award-winning dramatist who has written for television and theatre. When I met up with her, we talked about her first play, Caravan. I was particularly intrigued about how she scripted the Liverpool voices and how she came by the idea of setting the play in a bleak holiday town in North Wales. With Caravan, when I first conceived of the idea, I knew that it had to be set in some sort of domestic arena. I also wanted the setting of the play to be somehow claustrophobic. I first of all envisaged some sort of holiday environment because there's never an easy escape on holiday. You're away from home. It's not easy, really, just to, just to leave. Um, and I thought that that would also be a good reason for the whole family and extended family within Caravan to be present. I did think about the idea of setting it in the usual domestic living room situation but from the very first instance of thinking that I wasn't happy with it it didn't inspire me it had been done so often before and it was the idea of taking them away somehow from their usual environment that really fired up although I didn't start with the location I started with the overall idea for the play but in this particular play, it is integral because, in a way, the caravan also becomes an extra character within the play. It goes on a journey itself, although not physical. It changes its ownership and it changes its interior. I think that the set and location has to complement the plot and the themes of the play. And when I say complement, I don't mean it has to go hand in hand. It could be that it's the antithesis of the play or it could be that it turns the play on its head but I think it is integral I know the characters inside out before I give them lines and therefore by knowing them so well when you come to write the lines you know the kind of things that they will naturally say I suppose really the initial stage was trying to figure out how the Liverpool dialect sounds in your head and from Liverpool I'm very very familiar with it and the second stage was then to work out the best possible way to translate that sound to a written word and then for that written word to be easily translatable back to a spoken word. I didn't write it phonetically. It's not like the, the opening scene of Shaw's Pygmalion. But I suggested the dialect by dropping consonants at the ends of words, using colloquialisms to suggest the dialect more than anything and to suggest the rhythm of speech because quite often it's the rhythm of speech which will give the the hint of the dialect rather than the the way the words are written themselves i think the workshops when the play is at a stage where you're happy with it that can be really helpful to get people to read the play especially out loud because then you hear the, the rhythm of the speech and you hear that oh maybe that needed to be quicker or that needs somehow to to be slower it's almost like conducting a piece of music at times which your head isn't always attuned to you do have to stand up if you're going into rehearsals or if the play is being discussed you do have to stand up for every word every nuance every choice that you have made within that play and if you're not prepared to do this then there isn't any point in a rehearsal room an actor will want to know why their character does that the reason behind it there is a discussion that goes on the same with the director and the same with the crew of you know sound people and lighting you have to know the choices that you've made so therefore if it says you know a lighting change or it goes dark or bright sunny day you have to know the reason why everything needs a reason it can't just happen you need to to discuss the characters actions and reasons and choices with the actors with the director with the people who are going to choose the costumes as I go I redraft and I redraft and I redraft until I'm happy with it. I've never ever just started something at point A and finished it at point B and gone, well, first draft. It doesn't work like that for me because there will always be something. You need to know why that full stop is there and, and why that comma is there because it, that influences the way your dialogue is spoken. From the Open University. For more information, go to www.open.ac.uk forward slash use.